Welcome to the Town of Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting for January 5th, 2022. It is uh, maybe 5.05 p.m., 5.02 p.m. Um, we're meeting um, remotely today. Um, I happen to be in the meeting room, but um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Um, if you go to the Town of Deerfield website, you could uh, see our meeting down in the bottom right by the calendar. You can click on our agenda and there will be a hyperlink um, to this Zoom meeting. If you want to dial in, you can do that. Uh, it's 41, uh, excuse me, it's um, the toll free number is 1 5480276. The meeting ID is 602 Should you need the passcode, it's 627371. So meeting sh attendees should mute their phones by star six for landlines unless asking a question or commenting. Welcome to the meeting. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hmm. So, so I don't even have the agenda in front of I me. I could I'm tell sorry. you the agenda. <laughs> so we have a, we've, called, we've called the meeting to order, uh, and then we had an executive session, which I don't think we are going to uh, entertain tonight. And then we had we, um, we really uh, this was just kind of a which was supposed to be a meeting for our executive session, but we did have um, an item come up that we wanted to talk about um, with the transition work that we're doing um, because Barb is leaving. So. And I, I and I actually had two unanticipated items. So, okay. Um, so go ahead. I know one of them, but not the other one. <laughs> it's just a follow up from the MVP meeting earlier today. Okay. So. Um, All right. Do you want me to take over? Yeah. Sort of give you the outline on the discussion item, David. Sure. Okay. Sure. So I, I, I had this. I had this listed as stipends for interim town clerk and treasure collector, but after I had briefly mentioned consideration of the separation of the town clerk position from the treasure collector position at the last meeting, um, the two positions are vastly different, especially now they've evolved from 1972 when this was first pulled into one position, but the actual separation will take at least a year and without some evaluation of the existing operations, office operations, I think it would be pure, premature to make too many changes now. The select board had voted interim titles, but after consideration of the statute and the fact that we need a both a short term and a long term plan, I think it would be useful to maintain our current operational status in the financial department. So this means I would ask that the board maintain the current titles of assistant treasurer collector and assistant town clerk for the respective for the respective employees so that we have operational continuity. And I did this, I did find out and thanks to Barb for sharing and helping me understand the authority for an assistant in either capacity to act in the manner of, for instance, the treasurer collector and, for instance, the town clerk is in the statute. They are allowed to act in that manner when a permanent person is not there. So that does maintain our operational continuity. It also it also works better with the banks and stuff because they're familiar. You know, there's changes that we make to allow the assistant tax uh, assistant treasurer collector and to allow the town accountant to do certain th or the town clerk to do certain things. So I think if we maintain that operational continuity, it'll be easier for us to evaluate what we might need to do short term and what we might what we should probably think about doing long term so what you're saying is legally there are definitions in the statute for assistant treasurer collector assistant town clerk but not interim which is what we yeah the interim thing i think is often used when you don't have anybody in place and okay. so i hadn't thought through after right. talk, I hadn't thought through all of those details until I talked to Barbara, and then I had a conversation um, 
with Tom Scanlon and he sort of drove that home. He, he confirmed because I had talked to him about something else um, and he confirmed it. So I think if we stay status quo, that would be helpful. So I would suggest that the board maintain the current treasurer, assistant treasurer collector, or the, I'm sorry, let me start over, that the board maintain the current treasurer collector and town clerk functions through the positions of assistant treasurer collector and assistant town clerk. So the motion would be to rescind our interim definitions for the positions and reinstate our financial operations through the current setup, which, in, which is the tax, which is town clerk, treasurer collector, through the assistant treasurer collector and assistant town clerk, right? I just thought if we maintained our current status quo with those functions, um, yeah, but we, have I mean, rescind, we have to rescind the vote that we made. So then if that's the case, then you have two votes or you do it as one vote um, and somebody makes that motion. But what what you want to do is maintain the current treasure collector and town clerk functions through our assistant treasure collector and our assistant town clerk as well, they I'll exist make, now. I'll make that those motion. positions are filled. I'll make that motion. Okay. So second that motion for discussion. Um, there are some aspects for the that, discussion. Yeah, for the discussion. Yeah, there are um, some aspects of the of the job. Not many, but there's there's a couple things that you know Sarah couldn't do tax taking that kind of thing. So there, um, we do have some time. Uh, so we have, you know, we have what functions taking, can't Sarah do tax taking. So, so okay. she, won't, she won't, but we really don't do that until June anyways, right. and because our tax takings, you know, our, our debt, the unpaid taxes are, are so low anyways, it's, you know, like under, it's like 50,000 or under that we could even go a year without having to, to, to put somebody in, in tax title. So I think that's. We, we have some time there. There was one other aspect that Jen couldn't do too, and it was preside over town yes, meeting. Yes, preside over town meeting. But I think we can uh, we can nominate some, say Barb came to the town meeting, you could nominate Barb to do that. Right. Like we can get, you know, we could just appoint somebody to- to. Well, there's a function that you do with the moderator. Right. And I sort of alluded to it when I talked to Carolyn this afternoon, yeah. There's a, a vote that has to be taken. Right. Um, and so we, we aren't there people. yet. Right. We have time. But it could also be, A, we have time, but yep. maybe not a lot, but we have time. I would like to talk that through with Lisa and Dan. Yeah. Because please. I have a sneaking suspicion Lisa has some familiarity with this. Yeah. So and it's not a critical thing. I was talking more about the operational functions that right. we need to do to continue business. So collections, cash right. reconciliation, um, the town clerk, the basic town clerk duties that need to happen. And, you know, one thing, like I said, I talked to Carolyn this afternoon, it may be helpful to understand our expectations aren't necessarily way up here, because if we can get some help from other town clerks, that might alleviate some of the strain mm -hmm. because those functions are very statutorily um, pr prescribed, but if we could get some help from somebody that could sort of come in and assist the assistant town clerk, that might be easier and, and vice versa, you know, it, on a from a temporary basis, I think that might be a good way to function as well. And, you know, I, when I talked to Tom this after this morning, you know, I asked him, if we could have him help us a bit, because we need to get a better understanding of how we could move forward long term. And he's a great resource. Not yeah. only is he our auditor, he works for 119 towns. So he sees wow. a huge number. Oh, yeah. 
a huge number of towns and how they function. And he did say they really are two separate functions, the town yeah. accountant from the treasure collector. Right. So, you know, it would help to have his input. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think and he's willing to help. And that was great. And I th thank you, Tom. I think <laughs> if we had a chance to um, really kind of sit down and understand what the um, what the extra duties will be through this transition time while we kind of decide splitting this up and who we need to do that, then we could get a better understanding of, of the extra work that, that say Jen or Sarah would be doing. So we could have an idea what, what a fair uh, stipend would be in the meantime. And so I was thinking, yeah, right. maybe we do that. Maybe I bring that to you next week because yeah. it would give us a little bit of time to talk to Tom and Brenda. Well, Barb, and, yeah, and, Barb. and yeah. get an idea because we need to we need to figure out some of the things that are in her brain that maybe yeah. she hasn't written down yet. Right. Um, although she's pretty, I think she's got a pretty good handle on what she thinks should happen. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but right you. now, I would like to clarify that assistant treasure collector and that assistant town clerk, because I want us to be in compliance with the law. Right. And frankly, if it's going to muddy the waters in any way, let's right. just keep it narrow to what the manuals allow. And that is yeah. the assistant functions in in abstentia of having right. a person, a permanent person in the position okay. or a person in the position. So I second that motion by Carolyn Mayer. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor. Hi, David. Can I um, ask a quick question? Sure. The tail end of that motion, Carolyn, was um, and keep our current functions Operate through through the, through the assistance through the assistant positions, filling the you know, permanent position. I know we're thinking of splitting it off um, and all that kind of stuff, but I think it's the same. Well, that's that, going to take at least a year. Yeah. That's I what I mean about looking at it short term and long term. Yeah. Um, both track you need to have a short term approach and a long term plan. And yeah. really, without knowing, a lot of details i don't think we can first of all let's not jump right let's give ourselves and i had that in the back of my head i just wasn't talking it through well um at the last meeting so what i'd like the other thing i'd like to be able to do is you've got two people stepping up to take on a lot of work they may be you know concerned about um but they're two different disciplines and it makes sense that we and it's it not only that they have to do their own job so it does make sense that we vote stipends and i would like the board to let me work on what is feasible and and so trevor alludes to getting an idea from barb of what she thinks is going to be big factors coming in front of them mm -hmm. Um, town meeting. That's I think they're question. both familiar, both people in the positions are familiar with the sort of out the schedule in front of them. I know Barb's been training, working with them and training them, and she's made the adjustments. I just finished signing the letter to make the adjustments on the bank account, so she's transitioning that stuff. Um, but I think it would be really useful for us to get a grasp of the duties and then come back to you with a suggested either temporary pay adjustment or stipend. Yep. And okay. I'd like to be able to do that, give myself a couple days and sort yeah. of talk that through. But there's another element to this. Um, so one thing that Tom said to me is he complimented Barb and Brenda on the internal controls that we have in this place. We are, we run a very tight ship. And I say we, meaning the people doing the jobs, the financial Lovely. staff run yeah. a very tight ship. It's very helpful for us. But when we're missing a person and when we need to know what the operations look like right now, so we can think about what they could look like. Um, I think we need somebody in there just in an advisory role to 
get a feel for what's going on. And that person needs to have strong analytical and management skills. And so, but also understand the separation between certain functions because treasury functions can't cross accounting functions and clerk functions are very much different, except that you're taking, um, I shouldn't say except, but one element of clerk functions are you're taking in money. So, you know, having somebody that's there that can help us evaluate this and what, look at these functions and work with the two people that are there and remember how things worked would be really useful. So I would ask the board if they would consider implement, sorry, I'm trying to talk fast and I shouldn't, I got 18 other things to do. So whether they would consider implementing a temporary advisory oversight by the town accountant budget director um, for the financial department in coordination with me and other resources so that we can get a better idea of, of what, what we can do to support the financial functions and also what's there for us to consider long term. I'm fine. I mean, I did talk to Brenda about this. She's unique. She's uniquely placed because she actually works in that department. And she, her past experience is a, a, a financial director level experience. So she understands organizational function, but she also, because you know she has another job where she acts as the treasurer for the fire district. So she understands very clear, that she understands the clear separation. And when I talked to her, I said, look, we would just need, and, and I cleared this with, Tom, that was one of the reasons I was curious to see what he had to say, because we need to keep very separate the treasury functions from the accounting functions, because statute does that for a reason. And so any duties that would happen would not be of a financial collections or treasury nature, nor would it be a town, cl town clerk function. It would be more as a an advisory role to help us evaluate what's going on and yet have have those people have some support. The assistant treasurer collector and the assistant town clerk. I'm fine. And then again, we're looking at we would need to make an adjustment to take on those those duties. So I would ask that the board let me sort of come up with a suggestion in terms of a temporary pay adjustment or stipend. Yeah, could maybe you could before our next meeting or something lay out a, a memo and you know let us know a plan going forward and, and what you think. So would the board be willing to vote that the accountant budget director provide advisory oversight in the financial department to support the general operations, but no treasury collections or clerk responsibilities? In other words, supervision, assistance. Yep. I think it's a good idea to get her opinion anyway. Mm. Does that need to be flushed out in a plan first before we vote it? Well, I mean, is there a rush to vote it? Like we, you know, we rushed last time. Is it something that we can just. If you want to flush it out somewhat, we can. But again, it. we would be maintaining that separation of duties. I right. really look at it more as supervision, advisory mm -hmm. assistance, um, another body to make sure that, you know, if a phone needs to get answered until mm -hmm. we understand whether we're actually going to have to provide um, support, temporary support services for any other function, you know, even a receptionist function to take some of the pressure off of the assistant town clerk who answers a lot of the phone calls. Right. You know, that's a function that I really don't think is something I would expect a, no. somebody in a financial position to do, yeah. but understanding the functional financial intersects and the functional clerk duties, you've got a resource that's that can do that. And that, you know, having Brenda do that isn't, I think it would be useful because certainly she's going to report back to us what she thinks and how she, what her suggestions might be. And I know she calls and talks to her peers and certainly Tom Scanlon for advice if she has questions. So again, this is, 
this is really sort of a start a group effort to evaluate these things. My only thought process was maybe it'd be good to have it in place on Monday. But okay, I mean, you I, could I you could have the pay ret retroactive. I mean, yeah, yeah, we could talk about definitely talk about the stipends and everything next Wednesday. But which my feeling is, which try to get the organization somewhat established. Was Monday from day one. Um, that's um, the three of them actually get along quite well, so it's not like it's going to be an adversarial role of any type. I don't know. No, I certainly wouldn't want that to be just advisory with some ability to yeah. sort of help yeah. them, but not yeah. the functional duties because I really do hear and I knew that they needed to be separated. This isn't my first rodeo, but uh -huh. clearly there's a resource there that I think we should avail ourselves are, of. How is the how is the uh, Brenda feeling about that? I just I, you know, there's a lot on her plate already. And so we talked about that. We Mentally would need off. to right. push right. some of some of the functions, the accounting functions off her plate, like simple data entry. She does a lot of data entry. She's very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. And so there are times that she does, for instance, when we do the big payables for the waste, for the upgrades project, she does all that data entry because she calculates certain things, the retainage and stuff. She doesn't give that to anybody else. So that some of that daily work would have to go. And I think there, I think there is a way to do that. But again, we sort of have to flesh this out because either way, she's at a point where with budget season starting, she's already gonna be up here. That's my concern is just- I know. Ugh. Too much on, the, we're, we're working everybody to the bone. And, and so I worry about just people's capacity before they I I hear you. <laughs> Believe me, we had that conversation twice this week. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, you know, for the for instance, some of the things that need to get pushed off my plate because I have to deal with other things is the website implementation. Yeah. Um Carolyn knows that I had Jennifer attend the MVP core meeting today because I had negotiations. Yeah. And those things take precedent. And I don't like not being there, but I also, if I know I can have a representative go that has some authority to, to share information and that will allow me to do other things. But frankly, I'm at a point where I'm ready to ask everybody for a part-time person here as well, because we need the support. It's just too much. And budget season's gonna strap us completely, but I'm not there yet. That's kind of a big ass. I'm not there and I don't have a plan for you guys. It's in the back of my head. David's not saying a word. <laughs> He's been saying this to me weekly for like two months. <laughs> well, At least. I, I think one of the things um, we have to think about is um, making sure that the freedom of information requests go with this new position. And then also, um, you know, this week I've had two cybersecurity meetings and um, from Homeland Security meetings uh, re regarding cyber cybersecurity. And there's a ton of money out there for cybersecurity, but the bottom line is somebody in, in the town has to spearhead it. And it's just, it needs to be taken off Casey's plate. So when we're thinking of doing these new positions and we're thinking of the job description, I think some, we have to look at how we're doing stuff and then analyze how we shift some of this, you know, job, you know, from Casey's plate to somebody else's plate, because it just, this is big time, this is big things. And the cybersecurity is just not going away. And you, Trevor, you know, I hate this stuff. And it yeah. just, I, it's so painful me, for me to go. And, but I, but it is so important. We've got to, and there just isn't anybody following up on that. And, yep. it, 
And I, what it's we very have, detail oriented too. Right. And, and we're paying oh, money. Nice. We're paying money out and we've already had an incident. It wasn't our incident, but it was right. one of our, you know, vendors incidents. And, and we just, you know, we got to pay attention and I'm telling you, I'm not the person that should be doing this. And, mm -hmm. um, but we got to make somebody, but somebody, a paid person in our town has to take this over. And I just, I don't feel like we need, we can't afford, I mean, it would be perfect to have a shared person, but I just don't know how we're going to get this through. Cause it, every, every model that they've so far used in the last two or three years, because that, that was what my plan was, was like, okay, let's do a union 38 IT person. And then, okay, then let's just do our four town person. And, but every group that has tried this and gotten money through Homeland Security to do this, to do the startup hasn't been really successful. And I'm, I'm trying to pick through what it is that they're not, why this isn't working. And I, and it comes down to it's just just not a follow -up, enough follow up in town, and you just can't hand it off. It has to be somebody that is one of our regular staff people that has to have an interest. And I, I don't know. Maybe we can get somebody that will do this. So I mean, it has to be part of the job description. Otherwise, we won't ever get anybody. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know if that's the way to go either. I'm just throwing it out there as one of the things we got to look at long term. Yeah. This is a big this is a big change that we're facing and we need to be mindful and thoughtful. Well, that's mindful of what the intersects are, thoughtful about how we approach it. And so a wise person said to me, let's step back, give ourselves some time, but we do have to have certain things in place and I think that's important. Yeah. Because there's also a fear factor if everybody feels like we're we're acknowledging that fear and trying to put things into place to support the continuation of services i think there's less anxiety about it maybe i'm wrong but that's certainly how i've experienced those things well i think one of our strong points has been we have always been organized and on top of our finances and yes uh, and i don't want to lose that and i think we have capable people that can help us do that but you know we we don't always utilize some of the background and experience that are available to us because there's we have to be very mindful of who does what you know if we're looking at things from an advisory perspective to evaluate what's going on, it's a good opportunity to think outside that box, but you know, check in with the people that that keep track of our stuff to make sure that we're thinking it through properly. Yeah. I'm sorry, I look at the people, not the camera. I know it's annoying. No, I just <laughs> um all right. So, so you have two okay. items unanticipated, Carolyn, right? Right. I just wanted to make an announcement that um, we have the VAX bus um, coming on January 14th. Uh, Alex has been working so hard and he got that nailed down and it's going to be from 1230 to five. We will have all, all, all uh, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, boosters, uh, pediatric Pfizer, everybody. This is for everybody. It'll be at Deerfield Elementary School. The link will be on our web page. It's going out to the schools. We're trying to get it out to everybody. Um, and then they'll come back on February 4th uh, to do a second round. We are, are truly our five to 12 year olds is only, a, it has a pretty low vaccination rate at this point, it's 44%. So we need to get that group up and we want everyone to be um, boosted because we truly haven't had Omicron yet. And I think, uh, that's going to be a really, it's going to be a big deal. So anyway, um, so that's happening. Um, we have, uh, potential for, um, stop the spread test site. Um, Alex is working on that. So people would come in, it would be a drive-through testing. Um, the state would be 
our partners and it would come through by the you know the senior center just like we did for that flu clinic and it would be you know i'm i'm not sure if it's every day but once we get it set up it would be a long term test site so um, with the senior center closed we could have people come through by the senior center and then out onto Conway Street and then out that way. And it would be um, a relatively fast, quick test site. Um, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, but, and in the meantime, the anticipated, unanticipated item is that Susie um, Antonellis, uh, the rec department um, chair is, we're uh, worried about her recreational basketball, mm -hmm. um, potentially the spread. Yeah. So she wants to, us to limit, vote to limit um, uh, parents to one parent uh, per child in the rec department. If there's any exceptions, like the household is, is you know divorced or you know separate mm -hmm. uh, parents. You know, talk to Sue, maybe both can come. Or if you're a single parent, you got a multiple kids, no one will watch your kids, then call Sue. But the idea is that she would be negotiating uh, with whoever is coming for the exceptions. So she would have a total that uh, she's really good about making sure that the kids wear the mask um, and when they play, but it's the total gym being packed. And I know from watching CeCe's games and stuff, you know, on the rec league, it can be pretty packed because of course everybody and grandparents, everybody wants to come. So um, Sue would like us to limit again to one parent per child in the rec, rec program. And then we would, um, uh, you know, have any exceptions to contact Sue so she can keep a, uh, tabs on the total. I would support that. I, I, I did talk to Sue a, a while ago, a couple of days ago about that too. And I told her that, you know, we want to support her and make sure that kids are safe and families are safe. And obviously everybody re realizes there's a massive uptick in, in cases and um, whatever we can do to continue the exercise and the program for the kids, still keep that running. But, but I think everybody understands that was kind of what, what our MO was last year was to kind of limit the one one parent because it was you know during that time we didn't know what was going on and we hadn't had vaccines for the kids yet and all but but yeah it seems to be you know really on fire at the moment so i would support that i'll second that motion carolyn thank you any further discussion hearing none all those in favor hi carolyn hi trevor McDaniel. Hi, right, Dave Wolfram. Casey, can you just let Sue know that we voted that? So she can So you voted that? to limit attendees to one parent per child and allow the rec director to make exceptions if necessary? Yes. Right. So she has the ability, uh, she knows how many people are actually going to show up. Yeah. And keep the total, running total. Yep. Um, the other thing, the other unanticipated item I had was that. That's your third um, one. Yeah, this oh, is me now. <laughs> um, is that uh, we? It looks like we had the MVP, a very successful MVP meeting today, and we think that uh, we're going to postpone our forum from February twelfth to um, the end of March, either the nineteenth or the twenty sixth. It looks like we'll we'll That's let everyone point. know when we come up. We just to put everything online. It just it's one of those things where the momentum is just isn't there and yep. the interaction in all the workshops we have such an exciting forum and you know I, we're not going to capture the energy by going online even if we have the ability to go online right. so and and i think this omicron cycle if we can just start the cycle it will be this giant up and then giant down like within a month or so but we haven't started it yet, so I, I don't know really what's going to happen. So we're just March seems safer. Starting, yeah. Yep. To March. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the end of March. We'll we'll let everyone know when we have a final number. And um, of course, we just need to think as a select board what we are doing. Um, you know, we're seemingly going forward with the Leary lot, and we need to move on that and this MVP period um, 
grant period starts uh, this, uh, you know, the spring sometime in the next six weeks or so, eight weeks. So we, what we want to do is we want to take the, you know, the green landscaping, the difference between a regular paved parking lot and all the stuff that we want to do, um, that difference to the MVP, anything that we want on the, like the sewer treatment plant, the phase two that we were talking about today, mm -hmm. Trevor, um, the, you know, the, the Deerfield Elementary entrance way, we need to put some of the stuff in there. And, um, you know, uh, so we have to decide what we're doing because we, we, we don't want to miss the cycle because we actually have some stuff and there's more money. So, uh, you know, the governor's putting more money in it. So we, we need to figure out, we as a select board, what we want to propose. So I'm just throwing it out there for- To think about, yep, we will. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's it. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Um, I'll make that motion. All right, I'll second it. Okay. I guess we're going to be out. Uh, I have this guy tonight. Uh, All those in favor? Aye, <laughs> Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Caroline. Aye, David. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Have Casey. a good evening. Yes. yes. Thank you.